Our last lecture referred to precision, which is the degree to which our measure captures as much info as possible about our concept. So this lecture is going to build on that um, and is going to more detail about precision by talking about levels of measurement, which are varying levels of precision. Um, so this lecture is going to help you think about what it means in practice to measure variables. And later on in the course, we're going to see that different kinds of quantitative analysis are more appropriate for different levels of measurement. So we'll be coming back to these ideas more later on. So first, I'm just going to give you a quick overview. We're going to be talking about four different levels of measurement today. Nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. So I'm going to go through each of them with examples in turn, but just so you know what's coming up. So first, let's start with nominal measures. As a note, these are sometimes also called categorical measures. Uh, nominal measures provide names or labels for the different outcomes, the different values on the variable. So you can't say whether something is more or less than another, right? They're just different. So think about this with an example. Um, if you had a question on a survey that said, what is your primary source of news? Somebody says television, somebody else says radio, internet, newspapers, magazine, other. Um, you wouldn't order these in any particular way. You wouldn't say one is more than another. They're just simply different. Another example would be to ask somebody um, what religion they are. And somebody could say they're Christian, they're Jewish, they're Muslim. One's not more religious than another. They're just different types, right? So this is uh, a nominal measure, meaning that you're giving different names for the outcomes. Second, ordinal levels of measurement. So for an ordinal level of measurement, we would say the different outcomes of variable can indeed be rank ordered. You can say one is more than another, that A is more than B. Um, but the distance between those different values is really imprecise. Um, we don't know how much more A is than B, even if we can't say for sure that it is. So again, let's talk through an example here. So if you were to ask somebody, how important are newspapers as your news source? Not very important, fairly important, very important, most important. Um, yeah, somebody who says that newspapers are more are their most important source, it's more important for them than it is for somebody who says fairly important. So we can rank order these, but you can't say that somebody um, who says that, you know, where they're most important, you can't say it's twice as important, even though it's um, two different um, positions more than it. So you can get a sense of where they, the different answers are in relation to each other, but they're not real numbers um, in the way that the numbers are more meaningful in later um, levels of measurement we'll talk about. Interval levels of measurement are a little bit tricky. Um, so an interval level of measurement is one where you are measuring variables um, where the distance between different scores is important, significant, consistent, and unlike an ordinal level measurement. So you can say that A is bigger than B, and you can say how much bigger, that A is 50 points greater than B. Um, but there's not a meaningful zero point. And that means that you can't say A is twice as big as, as B. Um, so these interval levels of measurement aren't that common in political science, but they do happen sometimes. So let's talk through a couple of examples um, just to get a sense of what this means. Uh, so for example, if you were to say, what temperature is it outside? And suppose we say that today is 10 degrees warmer than yesterday. Um, that 10 degrees is something meaningful, right? So if it's 20 degrees today and yesterday it was 10, you know, it is 10 degrees warmer. And that means the same thing, like those 10 degrees um, would be consistent if you were to say it's 95 versus 105, that's 10 degrees also. Um, but you can't say it's twice as warm just because today is 20 and yesterday was 10. So it's not, um, these numbers, you can't be multiplied by each other. Another example more from political science would be if you were to say on a scale of zero to 100, this is called a feeling thermometer with 100 being very favorable, zero being very unfavorable. How do you feel about the performance of your member of Congress? Um, that you can talk about, you know, those numbers being consistent, a distance of 10 meaning something, 
but zero doesn't usually mean no approval. Um, it might mean active disapproval. Um, and so it's not a really a meaningful number. It doesn't mean you have none of favorability. And the final level of measurement is called a ratio. So the ratio um, measure is when where you're measuring variables uh, where the distance between the different scores is important and consistent. So that's the same as interval. And there's a true zero point. So this is how it's different from interval. Uh, so you can say that A is 50 points greater than B. And you could say that A is twice as big as B or three times as big as B because it has a meaningful zero point. So think about this with examples. Um, what's your age? You ask that and somebody is 100. And you ask another person who's 50. We can say that the person who's 100 is twice as old as the person who's 50. Um, zero means something in that example. It's a newborn baby that has no age. Um, so that would be a ratio level of measurement where you have this meaningful zero point. It means you can multiply by each other and it means something. So those are the four different levels of measurement.